travel consideration provided by Protect your pet with the number one name in flea and tick protection. Frontline Plus. Trusted by vets for nearly 20 years. Gavin, you want to floss with me? Ready? One, two, three. Well, I cannot wait for Monday because it kicks off Kids Week on The Price is Right. And I've got host Drew Carey with me now. What's happening now? Schools are closed for the rest of the year, but some retail businesses opening up at least part way. We go through some of the restrictions that Governor Abbott is loosening when it comes to COVID-19. I don't know if logistically <laughs> it's possible to, um, you know, really make sure everyone's doing it. Starting next week, wearing a face mask in public is a must. If you don't, you could face stiff fines or even jail time. But is this new order really enforceable? What one local attorney has to say. If you have an old blood type, you are in high demand to donate blood. I'm Devin Clark, and coming up, we'll tell you how and where you can help. This is normally the best time to buy and sell a house, but what about now? Coming up, how real estate agents are changing the game. And we have a few light showers to talk about this afternoon, but the main headline is the cold front that's about to hit. I'll let you know how that's gonna affect your weekend coming right up. The News at Five starts right now. First at five, more than 17,300 cases of COVID-19 confirmed across the state. Of those, more than 420 people have died. And it's estimated nearly 4,200 people have recovered. You can find case by case the cases in the county on KSAT.com. And today, Governor Greg Abbott announced plans to reopen the state. Part of his plan includes keeping schools closed and having retailers open for business with certain restrictions. Again, all of this part of Governor Abbott's plan for reopening the economy. Garrett Berger joins us now live to take us through it. Garrett. Well, it's a little bit of a mixed bag, especially if you're a parent, as schools are not going to be opened up again for the rest of this school year. Um, however, Abbott, not well, neither Abbott or the other officials said today that Texas is over the hump. They did seem to indicate they believe that the state is gaining a little bit of control over the pandemic and that we might we might be seeing close to the end of the worst of it. And the governor saying the state should be able to start opening up while still containing the virus. Now, state parks will be opened back up on Monday, then two days later, surgery restrictions will be loosened. Then starting next Friday, all stores across Texas, whether they're considered essential or not, will be able to operate, but only for pickups, shipping or delivery. Still no browsing. The governor already planning to announce a new set of orders in 10 days. Consider the possibility of opening more venues, venues like restaurants, movie theaters and other gathering places that can provide safe distancing practices. They will also consider expanding elective surgeries. Helping develop recommendations will be a new strike force to open Texas, whose members and advisors include members of government, medical experts, and the members of the business community, including the owner of Bill Miller's. Texas Democrats have criticized the plans and the makeup of the strike force, as well as the amount of testing that's actually happening in the state. Though locally, neither the Bear County judge or San Antonio mayor seem to be taking any issue with the steps unveiled by Abbott so far. The mayor just saying he wants to make sure we're being led by medical experts. Coming up later at 6, you can hear all the latest updates from the from the mayor and the judge about what's happening here locally. Live downtown, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. Well, we now know Governor Abbott's plans to reopen Texas, but as we head into the weekend, governors in other states are left grappling with when to open and how exactly to do it. As Camila Bernal explains, not all of them are convinced now is the best time. She joins us live from Washington. Camila. Hey, EC, so some states could open as early as May 4th. That is what the White House is saying. But of course, every governor has different opinions and they're likely going to roll out different things and have different methods of reopening their own states. But the one thing that they do have in common is that all of these governors are going to have to balance the health aspect of all of this and the economics. I believe it will boom. That's President Trump's goal for the economy unveiling federal guidelines for when states should begin a phased reopening of certain businesses. We are not opening all at once. 
but one careful step at a time. But the final call comes down to governors. Some warn against reopening the economy without rapid testing. You have to develop a testing capacity that does not now exist. Leaders at Amazon say they're assembling their own lab to start testing its frontline employees. It's the only way for us to get uh, the economies uh, of the world going again uh, is to uh, have a system where testing is readily available so that those who are diagnosed positive can uh, be taken care of and isolated from the population of uh, workers. Meanwhile, Congress remains at a stalemate. White House officials asking for more money for the small business loan program. I just don't know why they can't do a quick voice vote and replenish it and give $250 billion. But congressional Democrats are pushing for more funding for health care workers, amongst other areas. We've also proposed hand in hand with that $100 billion for health care for our hospitals, which are the front line here, and $30 billion for a testing program. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer says negotiations will continue okay. through the weekend. And in the midst of all of these layoffs and the unemployment, there are some companies that are still hiring. Walmart, for example, saying they've already hired about 150,000 people. They plan to hire 50,000 more. They say they're hiring about 5,000 thousand people every single day. Amazon also saying they've hired about a hundred thousand people and they want to hire 75,000 more. They say that they're paying people even more money to go work. But of course, a lot of the employees asking for a guarantee in terms of safety. ECs. All right, Camila Bernal reporting live in Washington. Thank you. The emergency declaration issued late yesterday that makes wearing face masks mandatory is drawing considerable attention even before it goes into effect on Monday. Paul Venema reports that while some think it's a good idea, others say it raises serious civil rights concerns. It's a cross section around town, some with masks and gloves, others without. Hey, if it, if it means staying alive, hey, I, I wear a mask and the gloves. It doesn't matter. Though wearing a mask, some have questions. Yeah, I don't know if logistically <laughs> it's possible to, um, you know, really make sure everyone's doing it. I guess the hope would be that by mandating it, more people would have the integrity to kind of follow it. The it she's talking about is this emergency declaration. Most notably uh, to include mandatory face masks for folks over 10 years old who are out in public spaces and cannot keep social distancing. Some say that order amounts to a civil rights violation. They're taking our freedom in the name of public safety. His suggestion, write letters to the mayor and to the county judge. No one should underestimate the power of their voice. So if we were to do this interview on the 20th, and it's in place, I'm not wearing a mask right now, are, are the police going to, to roll up inside me? According to the order, they could, and fine you $1,000 or order you to spend six months in jail. All that in my case at 12 News. The coronavirus pandemic impacting the health of Americans in more ways than one. According to pharmacy benefits manager Express Scripts, the number of prescriptions for anti-anxiety medications like Xanax and Valium increased by 34% in the days after COVID-19 was classified a pandemic. Use among women was twice as much as use among men. In two separate polls from the American Psychiatric Association and the Kaiser Family Foundation, a large portion of respondents reported feeling more stressed and anxious about contracting the virus themselves or having a family member test positive. We have tips to help you manage stress right now on KSAT.com. From helping yourself get through the pandemic to helping others, there's a growing need for blood donations across the U.S. Here in San Antonio, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center has figured out a way to do it while keeping social distancing in mind. As Devin Clark explains, new measures are being taken to keep new and returning donors safe. It's always important to give and they're running particularly low right now, and I'm a O negative. As a teacher here at Holmes High School, Kathleen Jasinski is familiar with the campus. It's now temporarily closed for classes because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So instead of giving a lesson today. 
Yeah, smooth process. Jasinski gave blood, a familiar routine for her. My 80th gift, 80th donation. The blood drive is being held here today as part of an effort by the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center to abide by social distancing guidelines while continuing the mission to save lives. So we have several community blood drives where people can go and donate blood, as well as our donor room. But what we're asking differently um, and during this time is that people make appointments to come out and donate. No matter where you donate blood, staff members are taking the same precautions. You have to get your temperature taken. 97.6 and your hand sanitized before entering. All our staff has masks on. Even with the safety steps, spokesman Roger Ruiz says that there is an issue. Some people scheduled to donate aren't showing up. Here today at this blood drive at Holmes High School, we're seeing about a 51% show rate, which is about half of, of the donors who said they were gonna come out. If you do need to reschedule or cancel your appointment, staff asks that you let them know as soon as possible oh, yeah. so that someone else can take your spot. If you missed today's blood drive, don't worry, there will be one every day for the foreseeable future. We'll have details on our website, ksat.com, and we'll also have details on how corporations can host blood drives. Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. The San Antonio Food Bank distributing food to about 2,000 people today at the Alamo Dome. The distribution started at 10 this morning, but people started lining up as early as 7 o'clock. Look at that line. Some of them told us it took between one and three hours to get their food. Others who didn't pre-register ended up leaving empty handed. If you are in need of food or would like to make a donation, you can visit safoodbank.org or call the number on your screen to speak with someone about getting help. Still waiting on your stimulus check? You are not alone. About 60 million Americans are in the same boat. Right now on our website, we have five reasons for why your payment could be taking a little longer. For example, one reason could be that it went to an old bank account. You can read the four other explanations and stay up to date with the latest coverage right now on our website, ksat.com. And looking outside, we have a gray day today and a little damp at times. I mean, you probably noticed a few sprinkles here and there. And even if you went out for a walk or a jog today, you got outdoors, you noticed a few drops on your, a few drops actually um, hitting you and you notice that. Not a whole lot in terms of rainfall right now and actually at the airport, not even a trace or I should say a hundredth of an inch. So just over a trace measured at the airport today. 65 in the morning, then we topped out at 74 and that's our current reading here in San Antonio. Now it cools off a bit into the hill country. Rock Springs already at 64 and 61 in West Kerrville. That's because the cold front has moved through the hill country. It's slowly dropping into San Antonio and basically the Highway 90 corridor. That's going to have a big impact on our conditions here as we get into tomorrow. So get ready for huge temperature swings, a little bit more dampness and a lot more to talk about, including another comparison of pollutants in the air before and then after the shutdown coming up. Thank you, Adam. You know, spring usually the time when home sales heat up with stay home orders. Selling a home now has new challenges. Up next, we're going to look at how agents are carrying on, relying more and more on virtual tours and open houses next. Spring typically the kickoff of the hot home buying season, but what about this year? For sellers, the pandemic adds even more stress to the process. And as 12 on your side's Marilyn Mords tells us, for realtors, it means doing things completely differently. It's completely updated. For sale, a charming 1910 craftsman. Chase Bartlett and his wife listed it late February. We had a lot of good interest at the beginning and it <laughs> a lot of people, it seems like they obviously have bigger things to deal with. March sales for San Antonio actually showed a modest 4% increase over the year before. Median prices were also up 6%, but that was largely before the pandemic moved in. We're still doing business, though. It's just different the way we have to do it. We're going to go in the house now. 
For real estate agent Matt Till, that means virtual open houses on Zoom. The master bathroom, again, really cute. Uh, vintage look tile. And taking prospective nice buyers on live nice video shower. tours. I've sold a few homes sight unseen based on FaceTime. In-person showings mean disinfectants and differences. We're now asking the sellers uh, before they leave if the house is occupied that they turn on all the lights for us. They open any interior doors so we don't really have to touch doorknobs. Economists say that April and May numbers will be much more telling for the housing market, adding that pent up sales could just mean a huge summer. As for Bartlett, he needs to move to L.A. soon. We're already kind of in a position where we're going to be paying for our mortgage here and, and rent there at least for a month or two. Of course, we're nervous. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Organizers of the Luminaria Con Contemporary Arts Festival announced today that event has been canceled. It was scheduled for November 14th at Hemisphere Park. Organizers gave health concerns and funding as reasons for the cancellation. You can read their full statement right now on KSAT.com. Well, Fiesta is still set to happen later this year, but if you're missing the festival now, we want to help you Fiesta at home. Next week, we are rebroadcasting all of the parades. It starts on Monday night with the Texas Cavaliers River Parade. You can find the full schedule on our website at ksat.com. And so I guess we started our unofficial fiesting at home yesterday with the yes. Caskey crew and the uh, Canyon de Cascaron. Oh, that was fun. That was a good time. We all <laughs> very memorable as we were cleaning up. My youngest, Josie, the five year old, the one with the hat yesterday, which kept saying, that's it, the best fiesta ever. Oh, that's like, so sweet. nice. You're five, but that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Anytime you get to fire off confetti. She has many more fiestas to come. That's just yes. it. Oh, but this one's going to stand out for the kids in different ways, of yeah. course. All right, so I, I've got another comparison for you. This information slowly comes out from NASA and especially the European Space Agency in terms of the pollution levels in the air pre-shutdown and then during the shutdown. So we're comparing March and April of 2019 on the left-hand side to basically March and April of this year during the shutdown. And there is a clear distinct difference in the nitrogen dioxide levels. And that's a byproduct of burning of fossil fuels. And you can see the huge difference, the red indicating the pollution in the air and then less red indicating the lack of pollution. And they're estimating that it's about a 50% drop in parts of it, especially the highly populated areas of Europe. Now that's plus or minus 15% because of a lot of uh, little factors that go into it, but still a big drop. And I know we all wanna know, well, what does that mean? It means there's less pollution. Right now, we don't know if it has any impact or what kind of impact it could have on say, greenhouse gases and global warming and climate change. It's too early to tell, but I know the Royal Netherlands Meteorological Institute is really researching that right now. 74 degrees currently outside. Dew point is 67. We still have the humidity here in town, but they're starting to see a break in the humidity in the hill country because of a cold front. So you look at our readings, 73 Stinson, 74 Port S.A., Castroville 76, but then you get down into the 60s in the hill country. Comfort at 63, Kerrville Rock Springs 61, and where we actually have a little sunshine, Del Rio, well, up to 84, but that cold front, it's dropping southward. It's basically moving through the Highway 90 corridor, and that's going to shift our wind around to the north and pull in some of this drier air for tonight. So it's not going to be as muggy feeling out there first thing tomorrow and through the night tonight. As for rain, yeah, we had a few little spritzes and sprinkles around town earlier. Now, just some clouds, and most of the rain is along the coastal plain. This is basically the epitome of the 20% chance. You know, when we say isolated 20%, this is usually what that looks like. And this just happens to be very light in nature, but very widely separated and not covering a whole lot of South Texas. Actually, just west of town and now even creeping into Holotus, we have some clearing. However, that clearing it will be coming to an end. The clouds are going to fill back in pretty quickly tonight. We'll have a few sprinkles here and there, light showers during the day tomorrow, maybe an isolated little moderate shower, but tomorrow's going to be damp and dreary. We get into Sunday morning, maybe an early passing shower before sunrise, but vast majority of Sunday, notice how we clear out 11 a.m. full sunshine. Sunday is actually looking very sunny and noticeably warmer. So let's get into the details. Dropping through the 50s this evening, a north wind. Tomorrow, cool and damp, only 62 for the high temperature. Okay, so a cool day. And then Sunday, 
the polar opposite, sunny and 90 degrees. Okay, talk about a tale of two seasons, just over two days. Low 60s, dreary, damp on Saturday, Sunday, hot and sunny, and next week, well into the 80s, near 90, maybe a few isolated storms midweek. So. It is going to be quite the weekend. That's a 50-60 <laughs> right. weekend wow. right there. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Adam. All right, so even if you don't know somebody personally that has COVID-19, you've certainly heard of people that have it. Yeah, and it's very rare in the NFL for any of the active players to test positive. One you'll know very, very well. When we come back, Von Miller speaks out for the first time since he tested positive for the coronavirus and the brand new member of the Houston Texans speaking out for the first time coming up. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Former Texas Aggie linebacker and Super Bowl 50 MVP Von Miller speaking out for the very first time today since he was diagnosed with the coronavirus. The eight-time pro bowler who has also suffers from asthma tells us he was shocked when he was diagnosed with COVID-19. Says that he'd been training first in San Francisco, which is one of the hot spots for the outbreak of the virus, before returning to Denver where he stars for the Broncos and tells us how he found out he had the disease. It all started with just a, a simple cough. I um, mean, it got worse. I also have asthma. I wasn't sounding normal. Um, I tried the nebulizer. It really didn't work. And my assistant, she said, um, why don't you just go get tested? You know, there's it's no harm in getting tested. Um, I went down the street, went and got tested. And two days later, they, my doctor called me and said that I had a positive result for COVID-19. Said he was shocked. Miller's one of only two active NFL players who tested positive for the coronavirus. The other is Los Angeles Rams center Brian Allen. Less than 24 hours after Texas head coach and general manager Bill O'Brien defended his controversial trade of star wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins to the Arizona Cardinals for running back David Johnson. Today, the Texans introduced Johnson. Johnson came to the Texans after Houston sent Hopkins at a fourth round pick to Arizona in exchange for Johnson and a second round pick. Many Texan fans upset the deal did not include at least a first round pick for a running back whose best season was back in 2016. The conference call today, Johnson told us he's well aware of the hornet's nest that has his coming to Houston for Hopkins generated among fans and media. There's always going to be some, no matter what you do, you can have to, you know, be the greatest and someone will have something to say. And so I, I've learned a long time ago how to just, you know, uh, ignore that and, and keep grinding and, and keep making sure that I'm, you know, uh, as prepared as I can be for uh, Houston. And, you know, I'm excited that Bill O'Brien came out and got me. O'Brien well, says he felt he had to make the trade due to Hopkins' future contract demands, but since he's not the first player to ask for a raise, what compelled him to trade his best wide receiver? It was going to be very, very difficult to have, you know, an elite quarterback, an elite defensive end, an elite left tackle, and other players and be able to, to, to do that. And so we felt like Again, after research and layers of research, that the best decision for our team was to move him to Arizona. All right, and with the governor's decision today to call out the rest of the school year, that means all the spring sports are canceled, including the state basketball tournament. All right, thank you, Greg. We'll be right back. All right, so this weekend, polar opposites Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, indoor day, Sunday, outdoor day, plain and simple. Low 60s, a little damp and dreary, cloudy on Saturday. Sunday, sunny and warm, 90 degrees with a bit of a breeze as well. You'll notice a gusty wind on Sunday. Thank you, Adam, and thanks so much for watching the News at 5. World News is up next. We'll see you back here at 6 o'clock.